In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to upgrade the firmware of a Zodiac FX. The first thing you need to do is go to northboundnetworks.com and then click on Forum. In the Forum, click on Zodiac FX General and then click on the Forum Post, Latest Versions of Source Code Firmware User Guides and Drivers. Paul has posted some good information including the user guide here as well as the latest version of firmware. The latest version of firmware at the time of this recording is 065, which I'll now download. If you don't already have the USB drivers, then get that and connect your Zodiac FX to your computer. Please see the other videos I've created showing you how to connect a Zodiac FX to your computer. In my example, I've got the Zodiac FX connected to COM port 3. So in PuTTY, I can connect to COM3 and leave all the other settings at the defaults. And that allows me to connect to the Zodiac FX. Help shows me various commands available. And one of them is show version. So if I use the show version command, I can see that my current Zodiac FX is using version 0.61 of firmware. And the version I've just downloaded is 065. So I'll now upgrade this Zodiac FX from 061 to 065. So the first thing I need to do once again is download the firmware. I also recommend that you look at the user guide. In the Zodiac FX user guide, there's a section explaining upgrading the firmware. And we're told that the Zodiac FX is stored within the flash memory and is upgraded using the USB port. To update the firmware, the existing code must first be raised, which will allow the CPU to boot into USB mode, ready to receive the update. So these steps show us what we need to do. So we firstly need to download the required version of firmware, which is available in the Zodiac FX forum. And that's what I've just shown you. This is the latest release available at the time of this recording, 065. We're then told that we need to disconnect the USB cable. So at the moment, I am connected to the Zodiac FX. So I'm gonna close my PuTTY connection, and then I'm gonna disconnect the Zodiac FX from my computer. So it's now no longer connected to the USB of the computer. Step three says that while the device is powered off, we need to close the raised jumper. Now here's my Zodiac FX. In normal use, the raised jumper is not connected. So in normal use, this raised jumper is open and not connected. So what you need to do is close that. So it looks as follows. That's how it's shown in the documentation. Notice the raised jumper is closed. That's not how you run the Zodiac FX in normal use. So this is mine once again with the raised jumper closed. But for normal use, the raised jumper is gonna be open and your Zodiac FX is gonna look something like this, similar to mine. So while the device is powered off, I'm gonna close the raised jumper and then we'll continue. So that's been done now. We then told that we need to reconnect the power source, wait five seconds and then disconnect it again. This will erase the firmware and reset the boot flag to allow the flash utility to communicate with the device. And currently in Windows, it was shown as an unknown device, but is now shown as a program port on COM4. So in this example, my COM port has changed. So I'll unplug mine now. We're then told to move the raised jumper back to the open position and very good advice, don't lose the jumper. So basically what we're doing now is changing the jumper setting back to open. So it's gonna be connected as follows. And then you power up the Zodiac FX again. So mine's plugged in now and is powering up. So we're told to connect the USB cable to power the device up again, 
and then we need to open the SAM BA utility. The SAM BA utility is referenced in this forum post. So notice SAM BA programmer link is provided by Paul. So I'm gonna click on that. That's gonna take us to the Atmel website. And now you need to download the relevant software. So in my example, I'm gonna download the Windows software. So I'm gonna click on the SAM BA 2.6 for Windows. Now you need to either create an account or sign in or download as a guest. I'm simply going to register as a guest and click submit. You will need to use a valid email address here because they will email you a link to download the software. In the email that you receive, there'll be a link allowing you to download the software. So you simply need to download that. Run the software and then click next to install it. You'll need to agree to the license agreement. I'm going to select default options. You could change the installation location if you wanted to. You could also change the start menu folder, but I'm simply gonna choose the defaults and allow the software to install. It's now completed, so I'm gonna click next. I'm gonna allow the software to create some shortcuts and then click finish. Some help information is then displayed, but essentially within your device manager, you should see a COM port that allows you to connect to the Zodiac FX. So I'm gonna run the SAM BA utility from Windows, and there it is. In the Zodiac FX documentation once again, we've already powered up the device, and now we need to ensure that the correct COM port is displayed, and the type is 891 SAM 4E8-EK. So in my utility, I'm connected to COM4. I need to choose the right type. So it's important that I select AT-SAM4E8-EK as shown in the documentation. And then I need to click connect. So the utility is now connected. So scrolling down in the documentation, we told that in the download upload file section, click the folder icon for the send file name field to select the appropriate bin file. So I'm going to select the folder for send file name. I'm gonna to go to my downloads and select the Zodiac FX that I've downloaded. We then need to click send file to upload the firmware to the device. So I'm gonna click send file. And as you can see, the file is sending. Now we told when the lock regions pop-up window appears, select no. And that's what I'm seeing here. So I'm gonna select no. We then told that under the scripts section shown here, we need to select the boot from flash. And that's what I'm seeing here is the default. So boot from flash. So that's the default in the drop down list. And then we need to press execute. So I'm gonna click execute. So we can see that the GPN VM1 is set. We're then told that we need to disconnect and reconnect the USB cable to restart the device. And we're told that the device will now load with the updated firmware. So I'm gonna close the application. I'm gonna disconnect the Zodiac FX and then reconnect it. In Device Manager, I can see that I've connected on COM3 to a device. So in PuTTY, I'm gonna to go to COM3 and press Enter. So Help once again shows me various help options. And one of those options is Show Version. So I'll select that. And as you can see, the version of the Zodiac FX is now zero. 65. Previously, it was 061. We've now successfully upgraded the Zodiac FX to a later release of firmware.